G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with something completely different today. There's a new challenge in sport mode time trial section, Red Bull beat the pros. So let's have a look at the event website here. So this is the website. So there's one thing I'm going to say about this challenge, it's a little bit thrown together. There's actually, you know, it's a bit... Uh, I don't really know the right word, a bit lackluster I suppose. There's no way of seeing... Uh, the laps in game there's no way of seeing the lap times even in the game you have to go to the website here but it's not too bad something is better than nothing i suppose but let's get into the details so of course um this is red bull beat the pro so the two red bull drivers are currently in formula one max verstappen and alex albon each set a flying lap at Suzuka Circuit in Gran Turismo Sport uh, using the Super Formula car. I believe it would be the Honda, seeing as Red Bull uh, uses Honda engines, IRL, in real life. So, Red Bull beat the pro. So, it runs up until 1st of November, I believe, having a look at that there. Uh, but let's get into some of the details. So... Well, actually, it looks like due to COVID-19, they uh, that, that this happened, so they decided to use Suzuka. Uh, little interesting bit of trivia: this is happening at the same time as the uh, Nations Cup Extra Stage, also at Suzuka. So, yeah. So, oh, we can see their laps here. That's good. So we'll have a look at both the laps, and we'll sort of scrutinize and have a bit of a look at how they achieve their laps and what times they actually do achieve in the end uh, as there's no way of seeing that in game for some reason but uh, we'll have a look at that now I suppose so this is Max let's have a look hi my name is Max Stappen and this is my lap at Suzuka for Red Bull Beta Pro Right, so let's have a look at this lap here then. Is there any way of slowing it down? You can slow it down. Let's go to half speed and have a look. So coming into turn one here, we'll have a look where does he turn in. Just on the 50 meter board turns in lift through turn one on the brakes just as we pass the apex of turn one there. Trying to get it into that apex. A little bit wide off the apex there if you ask me, but that's not too bad. Flying up towards the S's. Tip it in flat out for turn three. Lift down one gear for turn four. Back onto the power. Lift. Stay in fourth through turn uh, five. Six. Down into down into third for rotation, back up to fourth. Not going all the way over to the left. Sort of central line. So this turn seven. You had a bit of a lift there, you could probably get that flat out from the looks of it if you get your line correct. Heading up towards the Degnas, Degna 1 and 2. So we'll see how he takes Degna 1, notoriously difficult for track limits too. It's on the 50 meter board, slight dab of brakes down into 5th. Down into 3rd for Degna 2. Onto the power, wide off there, look at that. Into the gravel, almost into the wall there, so that's going to lose quite a significant chunk of time there. Uh, but he is nearly a second up on his old time of a 141.4, you can see. Breaking just on the end of the kerb on the right-hand side. Down into first gear for the hairpin. Look at all that lock he's got on on that wheel there. Get it out of there. Not too bad. A little bit of wheel spin, but nothing we can't handle. That's going through the long turn 12 here at Suzuka. Alright, Spoon now, where does he break? Just bef just on the start of the AstroTurf on the right. Down into third for second spot part of Spoon. It's turn 14. And onto the power nicely. A little bit of a lift after he got onto the power. He definitely could have afforded to stay flat as he didn't touch that curb on the outside. So, uh, lost or losing a little bit of time down this straight. So 130R is coming up. It's going to be interesting to see whether he takes a line of least resistance or takes a line uh, minimising distance. We'll see what he does. Easily flat out, of course. I knew that. 
central down the circuit, so a nice a hybrid between the two options you have there. Breaking towards the chicane, just after the 100 meter board, he gets onto the brakes. Look at that, he doesn't cut the chicane, you can cut the chicane at the end of the, ch uh, end of the lap at Suzuka on this game, you can cut it by quite a lot. So there's going to be quite a big chunk of time you've got to be able to gain on the exit there. Now does he keep it tight heading through turn 18? Not, not really. Central line, perhaps going for a second lap. A 139.322 Max Verstappen sets there. So that's going to be interesting. 139.2, I don't know how good or how bad that is at this point here. Uh, we'll potentially have a look at the top time a little bit later. But there we go, that's Max, Max Verstappen's time. We move on to Alex Albon. Uh, so this is his lap here. So let's have a look. Hi, my name is Alex Albon. We're at Suzuka, and this is Red Bull Beat the Pro. Right. So let's have a look at Albon's time then. Uh, well, once again, we'll slow it down to half speed. Just drag it back a little bit too. Right, let's have a look there. So just after the 50 meter board turns in flat out through turn one and breaks on the end of the curb at turn one for turn two. So a little bit better than Max Verstappen already. <laughs> But heading out of turn two, third gear, a little bit wide, grazes the grass, so it's going to lose him a little bit of time, but not to worry. Turn three, easy flat, turn four, similar technique, break down one gear for turn four. Turn five, gets up onto that curb a little bit more, but just stays in fourth. Turn six, braking nice and tight, he keeps it in fourth, that's interesting, so he doesn't go for that rotation, but he's further over to the left there. Tipping it into turn seven, a little bit of a lift through turn seven. Way out on that curb, very close to the limits there. Coming up towards the Degners. So you remember Max Verstappen had to lift heading through Degner one. We'll see if Alex Albon does the same. Yep, a little bit of a lift down one gear and then braking heavily for Degner two. Head onto that curb. Uses that AstroTurf, but doesn't go wide into the gravel and on the grass. So uh, that's going to be a little bit better in terms of lap time. Towards the hairpin, just after the end of the curb on the right-hand side. First gear for uh, uh, deceleration and rotation. He actually keeps it in first for the traction zone too. So it could be to potentially a little bit of time gain from selecting second gear on the exit there. So it's going to be interesting to see how that translates when we have our go at trying to beat the pros. But we're going to go through the long turn 12 at Suzuka. No time deltas or anything, so there's no way to see or compare the lap to Verstappen at this point. Uh, so that's going to be interesting uh, to see who's faster. Breaking just on the start of the Astro Turf, heading into turn 13. Same as Max Verstappen, fourth gear through 13. Breaking just before the end of the curb on the right hand side, down into third gear for turn 14. Exit of Spoon onto the power nicely. Uses that curb on the exit there. Max Verstappen did not do that. He had to lift after getting onto the power on the exit of Spoon there. So uh, that would potentially translate to a time gain. So heading down the back stretch, as it's officially known, uh, up towards 130R. We'll see if Albon takes the hybrid line or either the minimum distance or least resistance minimum distance he takes further over to the left hand side of the circuit which is good as the following corner is a right hander breaking just before the 100 meter board so a little bit earlier uh, than Verstappen and cuts that first bit of the chicane that's what you want to do in this game here so he takes a better line through the first part doesn't cut the second part you can get all the way up on all of that astroturf on the second part of the chicane We'll see if he takes it over to the right hand side a little bit more. He does a little bit more than Verstappen. Yeah, so that line of lesser distance. A 138.8. So the secondary Red Bull driver is faster than the primary Red Bull driver. So uh, that's his lap there. So my lap time was a 1 minute 38.874. What's your lap time? Interesting. 
Right, so now we're actually going to look at the top time. I've blurred out the top as that is the time I ended up setting. I would hate to ruin that. Uh, the reason I put this part in in the way it is is because I actually did view the quickest lap before I had my go, but I did not record it. So I decided to go back and record it so I could show you in the video a bit more chronologically and how I sort of learned. So um, I did see this time, it just wasn't recorded, which is why my time is present at the top while we're looking at this. But let's have a go. Williams B Racer, two seconds quicker than Albon. Let's see what he does uh, all the way flat out through turn one, actually a little bit wider. Uh, around through turn two. Third gear, nicely. Th uh, turn three, flat out in fourth. Turn four and five. Pretty similar to how the Red Bull drivers do it, actually. And down into third for turn six. So that's kind of what Verstappen did. And then flat out through turn seven, uh, if you get that line correct. Coming up towards the Degnas now. It's going to be crucial to how uh, we take this. Flat out through Degna one. Have a look at that. So you, you might remember the Red Bull drivers having a bit of a lift through Degna 1, and then we're going to have a look at, at the hairpin now, breaking just after the end of the kerb. Ah, uh, that was a dab of handbrake, so this guy is a bit mad, actually. Uh, dab a handbrake through the hairpin. I don't think we decide to do that. Uh, I just wanted to get a nice clean lap in. I didn't want to add that extra variable of the handbrake turn in there. <laughs> It's also a little bit unrealistic. I can't imagine a super formula driver using handbrake on a hot lap. I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, do correct me, but it's hard to imagine, especially because these cars probably don't even have a handbrake. <laughs> they probably do, but you know what I'm trying to say. But as we come through 130R, definite line of lesser distance there, so uh, more close, closer to Albon's lap. And look at the chicane, that's abuse right there. So the track limit on the second part of the chicane is at least one tyre on the a bit of AstroTurf that's beyond the kerb. We're going to go back and have a look at this hairpin and see exactly how he takes it. So we unfortunately can't see the input while we're controlling it, but we're just going to stop it there. Yes, definite handbrake. Uh, is on the little uh, notification icon for handbrake activation is turned on so it's definite handbrake see he just dabs it and the back end just flicks around the corner exactly precisely how you'd want to do it and that gets him a 130 a 136.8 a full two seconds quicker than Albon two and a half seconds quicker than Max Verstappen so yes very very beatable these times and I think that we can do it so we're going to go into this session now. They both used the Honda. I'm actually going to go for the Toyota. I believe the cars are exactly the same, so uh, I just prefer the sound of the Toyota. So that's why I chose the Toyota. Uh, it's available for use, so, you know, I'm going to use the one that sounds best. But let's have a go. I'm going to go through pretty much the entire story of how I uh, went through this session here. So uh, we're going to start now. This is my very first time... Uh, in this here. I don't drive the Super Formula cars much. I also don't really enjoy Suzuka 1 Iota. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how long it takes for me to actually achieve the lap times. Uh, so I've got Verstappen's and Albon's laps both on the left hand side of your screen. They're highlighted red at the moment to indicate I haven't beat them. Uh, I will change the colours of each of the lap times accordingly as I get quicker uh, or if I get quicker I suppose is what I'm going to do. Uh, but you can see we're just trying to get through the S's at this point. This stage, really, uh, I was just focusing on trying to get in, in ta uh, you sort of in, in tune with the car. It's a very difficult vehicle to drive this Super Formula car. Very good at high speed, of course, but uh, you do get a lot of aero push. So that means the car is so down, so pushed into the road, and the forward momentum is so high that when you turn, it just goes straight. As the sort of downforce flowing over the shape of the car sort of inhibits it turning a little bit so you've got to get past that uh, but you can see we spin out at the hairpin on our first go so hairpin is the most crucial traction zone of this lap it's the slowest corner on the lap and uh, you can see we actually completely overcook it trying to start uh, that lap there but we go again let's see if we can actually get a clean uh, lap in this time through the chicane trundling through the chicane at the start of the lap uh, and we're going to get underway. So yes, the hairpin is a crucial traction zone. We see there's different ways to take it. You can do the first gear, second gear, handbrake, um, just nice and gentle, really ultra slow on the apex, or you can try and carry the speed through. Uh, we'll see how we go as we sort of get to it and get faster. 
Uh, you see we're a little bit wide through turn two that time, so that's not good in terms of lap time, but I feel as though I got up to speed through the first sector, uh, through turns three, four, five, six, and seven. I felt like I got up to speed through there quite quickly in the grand scheme of it. I struggle at uh, the Degnas, and we'll see that throughout today's video. Through Degna 1, trying to get that flat out onto the Astro Turf, does a little bit of a wiggle under braking, uh, but we get through there penalty free. Uh, of course, penalties are on. Track limit and uh, barrier collision penalties are on for this session here. So we can't go too aggressive with the corner cutting or pushing track limits. A nice exit out of the hairpin. I feel like definitely second gear is better because if you're in first, I feel as though the car is just so unstable and you need to change up to second so quickly uh, that it's almost not worth being in first gear. Get Spoon, not too bad. A little bit wide off turn 14, but it's not too bad. Down the back straight, it's looking fairly good to get a lap time on the board. Get a bit of a benchmark to see where we are uh, in the uh, old leaderboard here. 130R. I do take a line of lesser resistance there. I think we do sort of gravitate towards a line of lesser distance. Uh, through there. Chicane cut that a little bit, you can definitely do that more and we're going to keep it far over onto the right to minimise distance. A 139.9, uh, a good uh, five or so tenths uh, off Max Verstappen. We're going to go for a second lap, see if we can tidy up some parts once again a little bit deep into the braking for turn two. Uh, that braking zone of course goes right through turn one or pretty much straight after turn one. The car is still loaded from turn one when you get on the brake, so it's a very difficult braking zone to get right for turn two, so you can find yourself washing wide. Also, that's, uh, you know, a small contribution of that running wide would be due to aero push, which is what we discussed earlier. We had a little bit of a lift through Degna 1 that time, so we turned in a little bit too late. You can see we're about one, you know, 120 uh, milliseconds up on our 139.9 that time. I've also got the um, time delta, uh, the sort of uh, sector, sector splits is what they're called, sorry, on the bottom right of your screen. So you can keep an eye on how uh, we're progressing throughout the lap there. And to spoon once again, we get a much better line through turn 13 and on the exit there uh, through turn 14. We run a little bit hot into the corner, but we manage to somewhat carry that momentum down out of the corner. And so we're about four tenths up at this point. We're about two tenths going into Spoon. So we're four tenths up on this time at the moment, which is fairly good for our, what, second true lap? Or I suppose third. We spun out of the hairpin on our first lap. Uh, coming into the chicane, we ran slightly deep. Massive kick of oversteer on the exit there, but we're over half a second up at this point. Nearly six tenths up. Uh, there, 139.4 already, so we're only about a tenth off Max Verstappen at this point. But then we're going to start pushing through Degna 1, trying to get that flat out and unfortunately get ourselves a track limit penalty that we're going to serve on the back straight here. We're going to come into Degna 1 again on the following lap, and uh, through Degna 2 actually we turn in too early, and get ourselves a half second track limit penalty. So, we're going to serve that on the back stretch. We're now going to have a look at another lap. You can see we set two fairly consistent laps there, a 39.6 and a 39.4, uh, two clean laps, not too bad. Uh, uh, so that was a fairly okay lap, uh, but actually no, we spun it and dropped it on the curb on the exit there, but we backed it up to have another go here. Uh, we're going to come around for another lap of Suzuka. So you can see this lap was a complete ride off of 2.15. So I did actually, after spinning out at the chicane, I backed up and redid the chicane so I didn't have to restart. Because I wanted to keep the time delta at the bottom for the whole session. Turn 1 a lot closer to the apex and turn 2 we managed to bring it into that apex that time. So that's a much better line. We are losing a little bit of, a to a little bit of time rather uh, to our 139.4. Perhaps not carrying speed through this S S's section here. But coming through turn 6, have a look at that delta on the bottom. Far over to the right and we're going to try and keep it flat through turn 7. We do successfully go flat out through turn 7. We're going to be gaining as we head up towards the Degnas. Turning in just on the 50. We cut that beautifully there. No track limit penalties to report of Degna 2. A little bit of a wiggle on the exit. We're unfortunately about 3 tenths down however so we're not carrying the speed. But we are getting the track fairly accurate. Hairpin. We don't come ultra slow for that uh, really tight line. Take a sort of central line which can work in some cases. So it's not too bad. About 
uh, 2.3 tenths up, or down, sorry, on our time. We did gain a little bit through that hairpin there. Uh, but as we come through Spoon, second part of Spoon's crucial to get onto the power cleanly and in one foul swoop in order to get the momentum down the back straight. And we have done that a little bit, or somewhat, caught up about a tenth there, about 1.2 tenths down now, instead of 2.2 or 2.3, whatever it was. Coming in towards the chicane, a lot of track, a lot of lap time can be made up through the chicane here. You can see how much we cut that. There we go. That's how it's done. Gain a lot of time through there, so we caught up about two tenths going through the chicane, and that's a 139.308 beating Max Verstappen's time on our eighth lap. A couple of mistakes in there, but we get that fairly quick. Have a look there. Uh, four tenths up at this point, but we just get sucked off on the on the outside of Spoon on that very slippery AstroTurf, and then as we come onto this lap. Now, a car does a massive snap, and we bend it into the gravel on the outside of turn 18, so that ruins our lap nine here. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit, so a couple of ride-off laps. So we're gonna have a look at another rendition of the S's. So you can see we're actually one and a half tenths up at this point. We had a very good turn one, two, and as long as we can keep the flow up through the S's, getting up onto that curb for turn five, that pulls the car around. Uh, we're going to be gaining through this whole section here, nearly two and a half tenths up at this point. On the exit of turn seven, just had to lift, unfortunately, uh, going through there. Uh, but we're going to skip ahead. We're nearly three tenths up on the 139.3 could potentially put us into a, a 38 which is going to be very good in terms of our pursuit for beating Albon's time. Coming out of the chicane, they come across the line, uh, it's not quite a 138 but it's a 139.1. Following lap we dip into the 138s with a 138.999 not a bad lap there. Lap 14 now, we're on in the session. I'm starting to push quite a lot because I know I can beat that time. Get ourselves a half second track limit penalty. And then we bin it on the exit of the hairpin for good measure. So the car's very light on the exit of that hairpin there. So it's so easy to spin out. I'm going to come across the line again. Another flying lap. A slight improvement of a 138.9, a mid point nine now instead of a high point nine. So not too bad. Coming into the first turn, nice and smooth through there. We're trying to carry uh, max throttle, 100% throttle, for as long as possible, as deep into turn one as possible. The car has a lot of downforce and continues to have a lot of downforce as we sort of slow down for turn two. So you can afford to go to 100% braking as well, sort of, it's technically trail braking, I suppose, braking while turning. Uh, but the, because the stuck car is so stable, you don't need to carry sort of 50% brake as you do in a GT car. Uh, so you're able uh, to carry 100% brake all the way to the apex of turn two. And when you absolutely nail it, uh, you can obviously gain a lot of lap time. We've managed to do that on this lap, and we're carrying that speed throughout the lap. You can see on the exit of the hairpin, nice and gentle. They're minimizing wheel spin, and that actually maximizes our lap time, or minimizes lap time, technically, is what you're after. You can see we're uh, trending towards one and a half tenths up at this point on a 138.9, so that's going to be fairly close, actually. That's going to put us well in contention of Albon's lap, uh, having a look. Here, of course, Albon set a high 38.8 with an 874 being the final three digits there. And we see we're two tenths up on a 138.944 this time. This will put us in a 744, which will quite significantly uh, beat out Albon's lap. Coming into the chicane, as long as you can get the chicane right, there's going to be a fairly solid lap here. Cutting that quite a bit out onto the power, uh, and we do gain slightly on the exit. We've actually lost all of our time. But we thankfully managed to gain on the exit of the chicane and get ourselves a 138.842. Following lap, 138.7. A following lap. We're going to have a look at our lap time here. We got on a bit of a roll, 138.5. Very solid lap times. And that, of course, does beat Albon's lap, 138.8. So we have successfully beat the pros. But I know I can go faster, so now I'm pushing really hard. You can see we've got two occasions on the exit of this hairpin where we just completely drop the car, spin into the inside wall, and then we uh, sort of chuck a bit of a Verstappen there and spin out, or, you know, go wide into the gravel as he did on his lap, spin out on the uh, hairpin again. 
But if we have a look, I put, on, put in a fair few laps there. Uh, last five laps fairly consistent with one another. But I'm going to show you this lap here. And this lap is going to be my fastest lap of the session. So we're going to have a look and see what it is. Coming into turn one, looking on the left-hand side, turning in just on the 50 being aboard, hard, uh, hard, full on the throttle, hard on the throttle, whatever you want to say, braking just after the apex of turn one for turn two, third gear through there, turn three, flat out, up into fifth, back down into fourth to get some rotation for turn four, up onto the curb, it pulls you around in fourth gear for turn five, turn six, down into third to get rotation, nice and tight, over to the right so you get flat out through turn seven, followed by quite you know, medium length flat out section here into the Degners, so it's important to get turn seven right, turning in just on the 50, flat out, and as we meet the kerb onto the brakes for Degner two, third gear, as you don't want to get too unstable on the exit there, two and a half tenths up at this point here, over on the right hand side, brake just on the end of the kerb, I select second gear, as it's much more stable for the car, gently, gently onto the power there, and you can see how gentle we were on that last sort of 20% of throttle application there, uh, we do lose a little bit of time down through this turn 12 here, but we're still two and a half tenths up at this point, Look on the right hand side for spoon braking just before the astro turf on the right hand side fourth gear through here meet out to the curb and just before the end of the curb down into third we've run wide through turn 14 so this time uh, this lap has plenty of time in it uh, obviously actually of course the top time is two seconds quicker than albon so there's plenty of time available uh, coming through 130R, turning into staff for the 50, line of least, of the least distance and braking just before the 100 metre board. Coming in through the chicane, cut the first part and cut the second part a lot more. And then we're going to come through turn 18, 3.3 tenths up at this point, nice and tight towards the line, a 138.2. Oh man, how good's that? So that's quite a large margin of beating Albon there, about six tenths quicker than Alex Albon. I will 100% take that. Uh, and then for those interested, that was about 250th on the current world leaderboard, which isn't too bad considering everything. There's, you know, several tens of thousands of people that do this, uh, do these time trials. So being sort of in the top 500 even is, you know, really solid going. But that is Red Bull beat the pros. So once you kind of have the lap times in your head, I guess you don't actually need it in the game. So, you know, maybe they didn't bother because you could just look at it and just keep them in the back of your mind. But, you know, in terms of the in-game experience, I don't think it's that great because you just told some times and then you just do a regular time trial uh, as you do with the other two that are there every fortnight. Uh, but uh, it's better than nothing, I suppose. And it's always satisfying to beat Formula One drivers. Uh, they do actually say in their videos or on the website somewhere to like literally go easy on them because they don't play the game. So it's definitely going to be, you know, you do have an advantage in terms of whether you play the game a lot. And if you play it a lot, you are going to have an advantage against these drivers. The driving experience in game and in real life is very different and I honestly don't feel that if you do Formula 1 in real life, you have any real advantage in game. Because it's very much about uh, how, uh, it's very much about how you play the game. Because at the end of the day, if you practice on the game, you're going to be good at the game. So, you know, the player does have a bit of advantage. But I do hope you enjoyed, and I do hope that bit of a track guide at the end can help you uh, further beat the time. This ends on November 1st, so I'm going to get this out pretty much ASAP, as it's currently the 29th of October. Uh, I'm sitting here watching this, so I'm going to get this out. So you have a couple of days uh, to hopefully uh, get closer to beating either Verstappen or Albon, or beating Verstappen and Albon. Uh, I do wish you luck in that. But do hit the like button if you enjoyed. Do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. But that's going to be the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.